Hello, my fellow scientists. I have four topics to share today. First, a new essay on my writing channel about parabiosis and vampirism. If you haven't seen it, it's super creepy. Uh, two, <laughs> loneliness, a familiar and happy topic for all of us. Three, a short review of a short story about a fictional app that makes people happy. Guys, a great short story. And four, reverse centaurs, a term for our time. I will explain. Okay, first of all, a comic I made. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about how if a vampire had a human sewn to his back, he might not have to drink blood. These are the things I think about. That gross idea comes from reading about a gross experiment in real life. Two mice, a young mouse and an old mouse, were sewn together so their circulatory systems could mix. The old mouse gets rejuvenated, despite having a very irritating younger roommate. That might sound like the kind of result that you know, Dracula would be interested in. I released a new video essay on Peter Allen Wright's a bit ago. It's all about this. And then for that video, I made this comic with Midjourney. There's the original images I use look like this, and it took a bit of work to turn them into a passable comic, but I like how it turned out. It's amazing as an asset generator for projects like this. It's getting better so fast. Um, there's this Reddit post that shows just how quickly it progressed in one year. It's amazing. Okay. Thing two, here's an article from the CDC about the risks of loneliness. It turns out that lonely people are likely to die prematurely. It's almost as potent risk factor as smoking. My biggest mistakes in life were made when I was lonely. Ugh, I hate even thinking about it. When I was like 27, I met this girl, first serious girlfriend. I met her online. I was finishing grad school. I was busy and I had limited social contact because I was in the lab 12 hours a day. And, and I started this long distance relationship and we met up in person and I convinced myself we were going to work out the distance issue. And uh, that was not the only issue. Anyway, she asked me for money for an emergency and I sent it and then she ghosted me. It sucked. I tell this story because everyone should know that being lonely is a vulnerable place to be. We make bad choices when we're in that state. And loneliness was the thing that made it so hard to find connections. I thought that dating was the cure for loneliness, but <laughs> you know, desperation is a stinky cologne. I would have had a much better time if I would just done fun social things. So if you're in a similar situation and you're lonely, I encourage you to find fun things to do with groups, even if that's not really your bag. You, arbitrary stuff can still be kind of fun if you find some people who are kind of fun to be around. And bonus you live longer okay uh, from this report in this seminal study of this type birkin and syme analyzed marital status frequently contacts with other friends and relatives membership and frequency in voluntary organizations and frequency of attendance at religious services they found that all four of these factors predicted mortality over the succeeding nine years in multivariate analysis that controlled for self reports of physical health economic status smoking alcohol physical activity so bottom line, staying connected through anything is good for us. Here's a related short story. Point three, this is probably my favorite short story I've ever read. It's called Better Living Through Algorithms by Naomi Kritzer. It was published in a magazine called Clark's World. They have an audio version too, which was excellent. <laughs> Here's a quote from the story. It's not a productivity app, it's a wellness app, Keith said. Like that made it better. The only thing I hate more than a productivity app is a wellness app. It'll make you happier, healthier. I've established three new good habits since I started using it. I floss daily, I have increased my fiber intake, and I go for a walk at lunchtime. That's nice, I said, gritting my teeth and thinking, please don't tell me about your fiber intake, Keith. Okay, so the story is about this app that encourages them to do these things that are valuable to them as opposed to real life apps that are making people miserably by encouraging them to do things that are of value to the owner of the app or their boss. It seems weird that we need an app to tell us to do things that make us happy, but it also seems super realistic. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. Okay, four related. Have a look at this horrible image. This is a reverse centaur. That is a term for something that modern management software is trying to create. Apps that manage your life. A centaur is a person with the hind end of a horse, intelligent as a man, strong as a horse, best of both worlds. A reverse centaur is the head of a horse, relatively stupid but trainable, and the body of a man with hands. Those human hands are the key. It's like how Henry Ford said, why is it every time I ask for a pair of hands, they come with a brain attached? Self-driving cars are not here yet. 
but we made self-driving apps that manage a person as tightly as we would like to control a robot, and that poor human is being turned into a reverse centaur. Apps turning people into reverse centaurs is one aspect of something that Cory Doctorow has called in -shitification. Here's the cycle. You sucker in drivers with high pay and bonuses, then you sucker in riders with simple, cheap, efficient rides to work. Then, when alternatives go out of businesses and public transit is gutted, you start extracting money. You enshittify the driver's experience by turning them into reverse centaurs. You enshittify the rider's experience by raising prices and not having enough drivers. Reap profits until everyone goes back to the bus and ride share uh, goes out of business. It's an ugly cycle, and it happens over and over again on the internet. And Cory Doctorow at pluralistic.net is explaining it all. I put a link there as well. There's also this amazing video related to that called Everything is Sludge, Art in the Post-Human Era. It combines these two concepts per perfectly. Sludge video is the algorithm reverse centauring video creators. It enshittifies the user experience. The app is reaping more profit from the advertisers who don't know that this is what they're advertising on. Excellent video, and ST Ruthless made an epic parody of this kind of content. If you don't follow me right now, I'll be medically disabled. And I will put a link to both of those below. All of these links are in the description. That's it. Okay, bye.